Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 11th of September. India-China agree to disengage troops at tense border. International allies welcome of one peace talks set to begin from Saturday. And over 70% COVID-19 patients recover in Nepal despite rising cases. And now for all the details. India and China on Friday said they have agreed on five points to guide their approach to the situation on the line of actual control, including the disengagement of troops and easing of tensions. The consensus was reached during talks between India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar and his Chinese counterpart Wang Ji on the sidelines of Shanghai Cooperation Organization meet in Moscow. India and China have agreed on five points to guide their approach to the situation on the de facto border line of actual control in Ladakh, including the disengagement of troops and easing of tensions. The consensus was reached during talks between Indian Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar and his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi on the sidelines of Shanghai Cooperation Organization meet in Moscow on Thursday evening. A joint statement issued by Indian Foreign Ministry said, the foreign ministers in Moscow mainly agreed the current situation in the border areas is not in the interest of either side and therefore the border troops of both sides should continue their dialogue, quickly disengage, maintain proper distance and ease tensions. It's a good step forward. It's indicative of political will by both China and India uh, to de-escalate, to disengage, to de-induct and to improve India-China uh, management of the, not only the LAC but also India-China relations. Tensions amid the ongoing border row between India and China renewed this week after both nations accused each other of firing into the air during confrontation, a violation of long-held protocol not to use firearms on the sensitive frontier. India and the United States in a joint statement said that Pakistan needs to ensure that no territory under its control is used for terrorist activities. It added that Pakistan should take immediate, sustained and irreversible action in this regard. India and the United States in a joint statement underlined the urgent need for Pakistan to take immediate, sustained and irreversible action to ensure that no territory under its control is used for terrorist attacks. According to a press statement by India's foreign ministry, they exchanged views on threats posed by UN-sanctioned terrorist entities and emphasized the need for concerted action against all terrorist networks, including Al-Qaeda, ISIS, lashkar e taiba jaish e Mohammed, and Hezbollah Mujahideen. The countries also asked Islamabad to bring justice to the perpetrators of terrorist attacks including the 26-11 Mumbai strike and the Pathan Court Air Base attack. The statement was issued after the 17th meeting of the India-US Counter-Terrorism Joint Working Group and the third session of the India-US Designations Dialogue held virtually on September 9-10. to The Indian delegation was led by Mahavir Singhvi, Joint Secretary for Counterterrorism, Indian Foreign Ministry, while the American side was led by Nathan Sales, State Department Coordinator for Counterterrorism. In news from Pakistan, activists have expressed concern and condemned Pakistan's judicial system after a court this week sentenced a Christian man to death on blasphemy charges. Human rights groups say blasphemy laws are often misused in Pakistan to persecute minorities. Human rights activists and minorities in Pakistan have expressed concern and condemned the country's judicial system after a Pakistani court this week sentenced a Christian man to death on blasphemy charges. Asif Parvez, a garment factory worker, had been accused by his supervisor of sending derogatory remarks about the Muslim prophet Muhammad to him in a text message. 
Parvez told the court the accusation was made only after he had refused to convert to Islam. Parvez was convicted after a trial in Lahore that ran since 2013. The court order said Parvez would first serve a three-year prison term for misusing his phone to send the derogatory text message. Then he shall be hanged by his neck till he's dead. He was also fined 50,000 Pakistani rupees. I understand that Christians who are in Pakistan have been suffering for 70 years. I am myself a Christian who has been living in the past 30 years in the UK. So please kindly, I request you to request that you don't leave your heart. You are in the Messiah, you are in the faith, and you are in the faith. And you are in India and you are in the faith. 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 Insulting the Prophet carries a mandatory death penalty in Pakistan, a predominantly Muslim country. Human rights groups say blasphemy laws are often misused to persecute minorities to settle personal rivalries. Islamist extremists has been on the rise in Pakistan and such accusations can end up in lynchings or street vigilantism. Moving on. International allies of Afghanistan have welcomed the announcement on the start of the intra-Afghan negotiations on 12th of September, saying it is a historic opportunity and all should come up with an inclusive approach at the negotiating table. Beginning of intra-Afghan talks follow intense diplomatic efforts, including the U.S.-Taliban agreement signed in February. Afghanistan's international allies have welcomed the long-awaited announcement on the start of intra-Afghan negotiations on September 12 in Qatar's Doha. U.S. President Donald Trump on Thursday informed Secretary of State Mike Pompeo will be heading to Doha to attend the intra-Afghan negotiations. Trump also said the United we'll States will reduce the, the number of its troops in Afghanistan so to 4,000 soon, a clause of the U.S.-Taliban deal signed in February. Negotiations, we've been negotiating with them for quite some time, getting along with them, uh, moved a lot of soldiers out. Uh, I got a report this morning that there's been nobody uh, killed in Afghanistan since early February. It's a long time. There's been no deaths, no problems, and uh, a lot of progress is being made in Afghanistan, but we'll be down to 4,000 soldiers in a very short period of NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg has also welcomed the announcement on the start of intra-Afghan peace talks and said all parties should seize this historic opportunity and build on the gains made with so much sacrifice. He retaliated that NATO remains committed to Afghanistan's long-term security. Qatri government, the Afghan presidential palace and the Taliban on Thursday confirmed that the negotiations will start in Doha on September 12. In news from Nepal, Nepal's coronavirus tally advanced to 51,919 on Friday as 1,454 new infections were reported in the last 24 hours. This is the highest number of infections reported on a single day in the country. Amid rising cases, the number of COVID-19 recoveries has also risen simultaneously in recent days. The number of recovered patients account to about 70% of total infections recorded by the Himalayan nation. Nepal's COVID-19 tally reached 50,465 on Friday with a rise of 1,246 new cases of infections and 317 fatalities reported a day earlier. Three districts of Kathmandu Valley reported more than 572 cases of COVID-19 infection on Thursday, the highest single-day spike in cases so far in the valley. As the number of cases continue to rise, the number of COVID-19 recoveries has also risen simultaneously in recent days in Nepal. By Thursday, 35,700 patients had been discharged from hospitals around the nation. Number of recovered patients account to about 70% of total infections recorded by the Himalayan nation. Pradesh Anusar Pradesh 1 Vata 3218, Pradesh 2 Maya 10,152, बागमती प्रदेश में 6007, गंडक प्रदेश में 2077, प्रदेश पांच में 6033, रकड़ाली प्रदेश में 2024 तथा 
सुदूर पश्चिम प्रदेश में पांच हजार छ सौ उनानब्बे जना हो कोविड नाइन्टीन संक्रमण मुक्त होने दर एकहत्तर प्रतिशत छ The prohibitory order that was imposed on August 19 and later extended for a week has been eased from Thursday. According to public health experts, the spike in new cases in Kathmandu Valley is alarming, and it has been proven that the decision to relax restrictions wasn't based on science. They warned that the infection will spread to wider community if authorities concerned only resort to restrictions to contain coronavirus. A 27-year-old woman from India's northeastern Manipur state has come out with a unique venture of spinning yarn from the stalks of lotus. She has involved women of her village in the task along with whom she is also producing finished clothes, hoping to generate income amid the coronavirus pandemic. Amid the coronavirus pandemic, when people are losing their livelihood, a 27-year-old woman has started a unique venture of spinning yarn from the stalks of lotus in Bishnupur district of India's northeastern Manipur state. Vijaya Shanti Tongbram had always been fascinated by the beauty of the lotus flowers in Loktak Lake in the region, a source of livelihood for the locals. She involved women of her village in making the yarn from lotus stalk with the hope that it will help generate income for them. She is not only making yarns out of the lotus stalks but also producing finished clothes such as mufflers, shawls and neckties. The young entrepreneur has requested the government to sanction funds under Manipur Startup Idea stage so that she can maintain her lotus farms. Lotus se guardian oi na taw ni nge khot ni nge and ma ha ka na ma na eh adu oi tar ga dinang yam na protective oi ba posak ama sem ba ya ba gi kari sem ba ya gi ha ba do na ngam tang ka no taw hai oi na sum da khara research kum ba khara taw ba product se khara hena value le na develop taw ba pam ba da gi du mai na hosi pau se cha ji pu thok pu di pu thor ra ni ba ko product mai ai di cha cha ba di di adu kha ngai adu ko se cha ba hai ka no taw ba chi di da ka chahi ani hai ta re ni Tong Brahm, who has keen interest in promoting agro-tourism, also said that she is in contact with entrepreneurs in the field to help market her produce. Clothes that are made up of lotus yarn are believed to have medicinal values and are in high demand in both India and abroad. Kashmiri apples are famous for their flavors and sweetness. Scientists from an agricultural university in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory have introduced the hail net system to protect apples during hailstorms and other natural disasters. This move will benefit both farmers and apple lovers. India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory is famous for its apples that has unique flavor and sweetness. and apple cultivation is one of the mainstay of the region's economy scientists of shere kashmir university of agricultural sciences and technology in srinagar city have introduced the hail net system to protect high density crops in jammu and kashmir hail net system is aimed to protect apples in the orchards from extreme climatic conditions hail storms and birds इससे हमने क्या देखा कि एक तो आपका हेल से जो यहाँ पर हेल टोन पॉकेट से वैली में उसमें से जितना भी नुकसान होता है वो आप अवॉइड कर सकते हैं और आप एक चीज़ रख सकते हैं कि आपको पता है कि मुझे इसमें क्रॉप आएगा ही आएगा क्योंकि यहाँ पर एरियाज ऐसे हैं उनको लगता है एंड तक क्रॉप आएगा अचानक हेल आया आप जीरो पर पहुँच गए लेकिन इससे क्या फ़ायदा होगा कि आपको पता है कि मेरा क्रॉप है क्रॉप रहेगा उसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं रहेगी This is the first initiative taken by the authorities on experimental basis at the institute where the scientists are always doing different types of experiments aimed to boost the horticulture sector. This is is all jo is sare barish kam bahut aayi hain late aayi hain temperature bahut hua kyunki temperature ki wajah se fruit ko bhi nuksan pahunch jata hai. Ye net jo hame laga hua hai yahan ye hamare fruit ko mehfooz rakhta hai aur hamare fruit ke liye bhi ye acha rehta hai. Jammu and Kashmir administration has taken horticulture especially apple produce as a prominent sector they are also encouraging scientific intervention in the sector which can improve the product well that's all we have for you from south asia this evening 
now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at sasianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend good night subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.